Welcome to the Low Carb Athlete Podcast, where we focus on discussing topics to help you burn fat, optimize health, and improve performance in life and sports. Transform the whole you from the inside out with the holistic method. Let's dive in. Here's your host, Debbie Potts. All right, guys, I have a different type of story today. I'm excited to bring on Adam Bremen from, well, he's the founder of Keto Crisp. And I came across Adam at actually the Natural Product Show and just really loved his story. And I would love to have more people on the show talking about these inspirational transformation stories from changing from the standard American diet to a nutrient dense food plan, as you call it, the proper human diet. Dr. Barry calls it the proper human diet, keto, carnivore, whatever you want to call it. It's eating real food that gives you energy, makes you feel good and thrive every day instead of trying to thrive the day. And Adam has a, just a great story. I was just chatting. I was on the low carb cruise last week with, uh, there's about a hundred plus 200 people in our group that have had you know, similar, but different transformational stories from changing from the standard American diet to keto diet. And you've had such a great story too. I really wanted to share your story, Adam, with our listeners today, that it's, it's such a, you know, good, everyone has their why and what drives them and gives them sense of purpose. So let's kind of bring on your story with keto, Chris, let's start kind of go backwards. What is keto, Chris, as people don't know. Thank you, first of all, Debbie, for having me on. It's an honor. I've heard a lot about what you do. and You've touched a lot of people. And I really think that at the heart of it, that's my why, is to touch a lot of people, to really inspire, to empower people. Because at such a young age, nobody put me in a corner. They took the time to, to understand me and to allow me to be special, not because I'm in a wheelchair, but the kind of person that I am. And I'm just so grateful for that. And I'm always indebted uh, to people for giving me the chance to do it. And I always put myself in their shoes. And I say, how can I make this person's life better? It's not about me. It's about us. So that's really my why. And, you know, I'm excited to be here on the show. And I want to thank all the listeners for following you and tuning in and hopefully I can help one person on the, the podcast today. If I do that, then that's a win-win. And, you know, again, I'm super excited. Um, I actually, we launched Keto Crisp. Let me back up a little bit, and I'm sorry for going off on the tangents. We're the Can-Do company, maker of Keto Crisp. And Can-Do stands for, it's about what we can do, not what we can't. And growing up, I grew up with an older brother who was my hero and my younger sister. I say this all the time. My brother's my heart and my sister is my soul. And my parents, they set the blueprint of whatever your brother does, Adam, you're going to do. And it's about what Adam can do, not what he can't. So in, in, in 2016, I moved out to California to help my brother rehab from a major injury. He's doing great now. You would never know, but he's a fitness enthusiast. He loves to work out, loves to play all kinds of sports. And growing up, that's what we did. We were just kids. We had people in the front yard playing. We did all kinds of things, just what, or whatever, I'm going to use the word normal, because everybody's got whatever their normal is. Yeah. And I just wanted to be like everybody else. There's no secret sauce. I love people more than anything in the world. And that's why I do what we do. Because it's about people. It's not about the bar. It's about the people. And the bar is just a platform for me to reach people and hopefully help them become as good as they can be. Because everybody's got a special gift. And, you know, that's what we do this for. The bar, by the way, guys, you got to try it. It really tastes incredible. A lot of brands, and no disrespect to anybody, they focus on macros first. And macros are important. We all know how important it is. But really what's great about our bar, or different, I should say, is really our taste and texture. And so I really would encourage you all to try it. I want to give you a little bit of background going back to the story. And you can cut me off at any time, Debbie. Take it away. 
so so I moved out to California in 2016 to help my brother rehab from a major injury. And, um, you know, I'm always by his side. We're connected in every part of the body. Uh, and he's just, he's my guy. So he was injured and I was with him every day for nine months. And during that time, we couldn't go out to dinner or really leave the house. So we were fortunate enough to have a good friend of ours come over a couple nights a week and cook dinner for us so we didn't have to order food. And my buddy, who's a cook, said, you know what, Adam, I'd like to get you into the pool. You know, and I said, his name is Gabe. And I said, Gabe, that's awesome. Let's do it. So I got into the pool, Debbie, and I was doing things that I, I'd love to do or I always wanted to do, I should say, but never really had the opportunity. For example, I can now walk in the pool with no assistance at all. And so we were doing some great things like that. And, you know, it really was, it was the greatest thing for me to have the opportunity really to improve my health. I know how important it is. And I'll share some more detail about how important life is, obviously. And it, uh, but anyway, I want to keep going. So I was working with <laughs> But hold on. Let me butt in there, Adam. I don't think yeah. we clarified. You are in a wheelchair since birth and is born with cerebral palsy. And you're the one yeah. helping your brother and doing all this stuff. So people, to understand more kind of how amazing you are and inspirational, you were going into the pool to do exercises and that helped you get more mobility and freedom yes. from that wheelchair. Correct. Thank you for clarifying it. And thank <laughs> you for keeping me on track. I really want you to interrupt and, you know, keep me. Keep no me problem. On the, on the sh- I'm good yes. at that. It's okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, it's all good. And guys, I really appreciate you listening. I can't thank you all enough. We'll continue to go down the path. So Gabe, I said, Gabe, you know, how can I step it up? How can I dial it up? I was about 60 pounds overweight. And I I love to eat. I love food. It's a sh- social thing. I'll never back away from it. But, you know, because I didn't move around as much, and I'm not a snack person. I don't eat a bunch of junk food. I do like desserts from time to time. Obviously, my lifestyle has changed eating-wise because I follow a keto-based, low-carb, low-sugar diet. But at the time, I didn't know what keto was. But Dave's like, Adam, you got to cut back. you got to reduce carbs. You got to reduce sugars. And again, I didn't know what keto was all about, but I I knew what I was putting into my body and taking out. And it was really incredible how great I felt. And just I saw the weight coming off and I got confidence. I didn't start immediately cold turkey. I wouldn't recommend that to anyone Mm -hmm. because everybody is different. Everybody's body works different. And, you know, I've never proclaimed to be a keto guru. You know, I'm just a Joe Schmo guy that was just trying to improve life and to get better every day. So I started and the weight just came off. And my brother has been in consumer packaged goods for 25 years. And he's, been, he's worked with so many different brands. And he said, Adam, you have an incredible story. You've lost this weight. Why don't we try to create a keto bar? Because Debbie, I'm not much of a cook. And I go into grocery stores. I look around. I love people. You know, it's my thing. I, I love to observe life and I'm in life. You know, it's much better to be in the game of life than on the sidelines. So we came out with three flavors, almond butter, chocolate raspberry, and chocolate mint. And, and we, you know, we did a small run. We threw it up on Amazon. Everybody knows Amazon. You can buy our bars on Amazon. Please try them. They're unbelievable. You can also buy them on our website, which we did. And they're there now. And Noah told me, Adam, I want you to go door to door at every local retailer in our neighborhood. And I literally would go there door to door, explaining to them how important the diet was and how important it changed my life. And by the way, if you're interested, please try the bar. And so they tried the bar and they absolutely loved it. And I just got calls and we, I'm getting emotional because I put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into this business and for it to grow the way that it has it even surprises me and I have the bar set so high for myself that it's just incredible so now long story short we we went to a trade show and we would set up booths and walk around just setting things up 
you know, just getting people to try it, spreading the story. And people love the bars. And then Whole Foods called. And now we're a global brand. We have seven flavors. We're in Sprouts. We're in Walmart. We're basically every retailer that you guys want to be. And, you know, we're fortunate enough to be on Amazon and doing well. And so it really, it's not really about the bar for me. It's about touching people. Mm-hmm. And I love people. And this is why the diet's so great, because it changed my life and it's helped so many people. Yeah. And I know every once in a while we're going to have days where we want to have that dessert or we want to have that pizza. That's totally great. And you got to give yourself that time. But I'm just, I'm honored to be on the show today. I'm <laughs> honored to share the story. And, you know, here we are. And we're just like, I just, I want to help. I want to help and I want to make people's lives better because so many people have made my life better. That's as simple as that. And, you know, we've got seven flavors and, you know, that's simply it. Yeah. Well, let's go back to how you transitioned from what, what were you eating before? And then how did you get to doing keto or, you know, maybe even explain what keto means to you? Because I think it's kind of a catch-all phrase these days, what keto is. So what were you eating before and what big changes did you make and how kind of share that story, that transition? Great. So I basically was eating, you know, whatever I wanted to eat, like pizza, carbs, sugars, you know, everything that's not, you know, I would just, again, we talk about it. I'm not a junk food eater, so I don't eat a bunch of cookies or snacks, but I do, you know, go to dinners and it's social and it's, Food tastes good, right? And so I, I just didn't have any good habits. And again, I wasn't burn. I'm not burning as many calories as your average Joe that can walk ten thousand steps or whatever the step is. I don't know because I don't walk. But uh, you know, I was just, I, you know, again, I was heavy, and you know, I just didn't pay attention. I didn't focus. It was, it, it was always a priority, but I never, I never. I had tried like Weight Watchers and counting calories and all that stuff, and it just didn't work. And I guess, I guess, uh, I guess I, I, I was when I moved to California to help my brother. Everybody was like, "Adam, you got to meet this guy Jesse Billauer." And Jesse Billauer, he was a semi-pro surfer, and at the age of seventeen, he unfortunately broke his neck and is confined to a wheelchair. And I went to his organization on June 1st, and I was so motivated by the people and the volunteers. I said, you know what, Adam? If I was in better shape, I could do more of these things, and I would feel better. So I guess it was just the want to and the will that there was a direction that Gabe took time out of his day and his life to work with me. I owed him that to be disciplined. It's all about discipline and want to. You know, you got to want to do it. And I know it's hard. I know it's hard. And you're not going to, you know, but we got to pat ourselves on the back. We got to, you know, get, you know, appreciate the little things. Start small so that you can build on it every day, you know? Yeah, I think, you know, I was, as I said, on that cruise ship last week, and you really see how majority of the Americans eat. <laughs> and especially when you have unlimited supply of food that you can eat any time of the day as much as you want. And I always say self care is self love, loving yourself enough to make those changes to take care of the whole you from the inside out, as well as working on what we're doing now to improve our future self. So, how you want to be living life 10, 20, 30 years from now. I think it's so essential athlete or not, you know, what are we doing to set the stage up for our performance in life in our future years? And I think what we're doing now is, is choices. You know, you look at, I did a seminar a couple of days ago on brain optimization and longevity. And what is the main point? Eating essential fatty acids, getting your essential amino acids, eating nutrient dense foods, like your animal meats and your liver organ meat and getting the egg yolk and, and all this stuff that we were told for so many years not to have, but, you know, you look at just performance and clarity and cognition and how we want to age. It's just all these things are choices we make. So it's, it's great to hear stories as yours that you figured it out early on. You were how old? You're 42 when you started keto? Yeah, 42 years old. And, you know, that, that's, 
that's exactly it. You know, it was finally just a discipline that I said, you know what, I I love I I love food, but I love myself more. Mm-hmm. I, and I've always loved myself. I think this is no disrespect to anybody. I think I'm the greatest guy in the world. <laughs> I, I, you are. I, you know, and I and I, I love people, and I say that so humble. You know, and I and I, I, I want to just. I want to mention something that's very special to me. You know, it's always been a dream of mine to be a family man and to be married. And in 2009, I met my wife. Uh, We were married in 2011. And unfortunately, in 2015, she she passed away with leukemia. On our our one-year wedding anniversary, we thought that she was pregnant. She wasn't feeling well. And we went to the doctor. And she was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia. And so my whole life was dedicated to her and making sure that she had everything that she needed to be successful and to be comfortable. And my role as her husband was to be her advocate. And you got to have advocates in life and you got to be there for people that you love. And we, we could spend a whole hour talking about Rachel. Um, she's my inspiration, well, one of my inspirations. And I know that if she, well, she is here with me, but, um, you know, obviously it's, you know, you, you, you you don't move on from something like that. You move forward and, uh, you know, it just, it just shows how important life is and you got to tell people you love them every day. Yeah. And, you know, it's, yes, the diet is important and living healthy and showing love. All those things are critical. And, you know, uh, I just always keep her on the front of my mind and I just say, what can I do to make myself a little bit better? You know, Mm -hmm. even though you can always improve, you'll always want to get yourself out of your comfort zone and go for it. You have a lot of support and love out there, you know? Yeah, that's so true. And that's kind of what I feel following my own purpose. Like you found your purpose and your, what you're passionate about and that drives you to do what you do every day and, as your slogan of your company is can do not can't do. And that just gives me chills. It's just so amazing to share that can do. And that's kind of what I'm trying to focus on. My own purpose is to help people be fit and healthy from the inside out. What I call the holistic method that we're working on nutrition and exercise, but let's focus on how are you sleeping, your stress management, your movement throughout the day, digestion, gut health, hydration, but my favorite part is happiness, gratitude, play, laughter, because I think, you know, even if (laughs) if you look at the hormones, oxytocin hormone, it needs to be increased. And that's the hugging, the love, touching, holding hands, you know, being around people you love and giving to them, you'll get back from them that oxytocin hormone increases, which will help lower cortisol. And Dr. Anna Kabeca talks about this a lot in her hormones for just how we can thrive every day. And I just love that. That's more kind of sounds like what your mission is to help share the can do philosophy, but, you know, embracing life to its fullest every day is part of the keto journey is part of eating food that makes you feel good. And your brain focus and clarity versus the opposite of eating the standard American diet, high processed foods and vegetable oils, refined sugar and wheat that just, I think that's a part of it, because if you were still eating that way, it impacts your brain health, cognition and memory and focus and happiness so much. So the nutrition part is so good to start with. And have you found a difference of your, you know, joy to live life to the fullest when you went to a nutrient dense whole foods diet? Yeah, you're frozen, but I hold on a second. I think it's coming. Guys, I apologize. I'm on location here at the U.S. Open. Can Do Company is sponsoring a pickleball tournament, and <laughs> I feel terrible that we're frozen because this is a interview. So we'll keep it going. Yeah. But thank you, guys. Debbie, you there? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. We can hear you. So, yes, I mean, we all know for those people that have a little bit of experience with the keto diet, or, you know, tapping, putting their toe in the water, all those things that you said, clinic. Yeah, hold on. I'm going to push pause here. One moment. Ready? Yes. 
All right, continue. Sorry, a little delay here. Go ahead, Adam. No problem. So we were talking about how the keto diet is affected your cognitive thinking, just your overall wellness. And it certainly did. And I'm not, you know. Uh... Gosh, sorry, guys. We got Zoom or Wi-Fi. All right. So we'll continue again <laughs> trying this, Adam. Go ahead and talk about cognition, brain health focus. Oh, my gosh. This is such. Yeah, so, um, you know, for me, with about two months into starting the ketogenic lifestyle, I could already tell, you know, all the, the benefits that you had mentioned. I could already tell the benefits that you had mentioned before about the clarity in your mind, the better sleep, the more energy. I've always been a loving guy, as you guys know, but it was, everything was amplified. I felt better. I had more energy, you know, and I, I started to really get feel good about how I looked. You know, that, not that I was self-conscious before because I'm extremely comfortable in my own skin. But I, um, but I definitely noticed a, a significant difference. I wasn't lethargic. One thing that I did have a, a challenge with even today is oftentimes I'll be hungry. So I use water or maybe a little bit of chewing gum to help, you know, curb that hunger. And Debbie, I'd love to get your thoughts and some ideas to curb hunger, especially as you get started. And that's, you know, that, that was, to me, a, cha- a real challenge was I was hungry a lot in the beginning. Yeah, in the beginning or and still now, or was that just um, in the start? Uh, in the beginning, more or less. Now, you know, I, you know, you do feel hungry, but your your body kind of gets used to the diet, just like anything that you do. Yeah. So definitely, you know, getting started. Yeah, I think for sure having electrolytes is a big thing. You know, there's uh, keto chow makes minerals that is helpful to put in your water, mineral drops. I like LMNT or Redmond's Real Salt up, just salting everything. And then the LMNT and Real Light both have the sodium, potassium, and magnesium in the right ratios to put in your water. And I do unsweetened because I'm trying to avoid stevia and sweeteners, but I think you know, get most people as you hear the keto flu, but it's really not getting enough electrolytes and staying hydrated. The other part is I always talk about how we eat. So we have proper digestion. So eating slowly, mindfully chewing our food, being in that parasympathetic state. And then the next part is eating the right macronutrient ratio for that person's individual needs as a bio individual. We have some people like me, I need way more protein to feel full. And so maybe not, you know, fat, two to one fat to protein, but I think a lot of people have maybe too much fat, maybe need more protein. So, so different. So Adam, what do you feel best eating? Cause you want to, yeah. So what do you feel best eating, Adam? Are you more of a, a protein fat? I'm more of a protein guy. Um, I don't know. You know what? It depends. I just, I just really focus on just staying away from the carbs and the sugars and, you know, just, you know, I eat a lot of red. Okay. Adam, the can do man is back on the show. Part two. We had a little technical difficulties the other day. So this podcast is split into two. So we're going to talk how we can do better. With Adam. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And I got to say, people call me the can do kid, not the can do man. Yeah, not but candy, can but can do. Right. You can, you can call me whatever you want. I'm just, you know, I'm just, I just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> the, so, the can do kid. The can do. Uh, it's awesome. So I really want to dive into the transition into keto and how you feel doing the keto diet what made you kind of we went into why you switched and how you transition because I think getting started to switching to low carb keto carnivore nutrient rich whatever you want to 
call it, Dr. Ken Berry calls it the proper human diet. So I'm going to start calling it that because I hate keto, the word saying just keto or carnivore. I just like eat real food. So the proper human diet is a transition for a lot of people. You know, I work with clients, helping them figure out how to become fat adapted, help them balance their blood sugar, but it's not just nutrition. It's working on the sleep and the stress. And what you're so good at is finding positive mindset, happiness, joy, laughter into our life every day, because that mindset helps us feel better, make better choices and sleep better. So I call it the holistic method that all these elements impact the other and help us make good food choices. So talk about your relationship with food and how it was a transition easy or hard for you that you went from eating the standard American processed food, high carb, sugary diet to eating more real healthy fats and proteins. A great question. I love the answer. And just thinking back on it, you know, it, it was, I'm not going to lie to you. It was tough. It was really tough, but it got to the point where I was so proud of myself for the work that I had done in the pool. I'm like, I'm doing myself a disservice if I don't try to lose weight. And it really wasn't about like, man, let's just go keto because I heard about it. Like I literally just got, got off carbs and sugar slowly. And I tell people this all the time. There's no book or anything. There's no like, I got to follow the rules to the T. You just got to do what's right for you, you know? And I, um, like I literally just started like two days a week, just, just, or one day a week, maybe I'd have carbs. And then I just got on a roll and I just saw the success. And I was so disciplined because it actually worked. Like it worked. And I was so I was so proud of myself that I actually did it. Because as confident as I, as I am and as loving as I am, I'm my toughest critic. And I know there's a lot of people out there that have the same mindset that I have. But I just went out there and dis- did it. And I was so disciplined. So yeah. disciplined, and you have you have to be that way. There's a time when you just say, you know what, damn it, I'm going to do it. And so, but, what if you fail? So, what if you have a cheat day? Well, so, do you have any suggestions to people? Though I know a lot of people struggle. Like I have some people I'm working with now that they just are so hard on themselves. So if they, you know, fail in their mind one day that they just say, throw the towel in and screw it. I'm just going to go back to sugar. So it's like the devil's on one shoulder, eat me, eat me, yep. the white sugar. Yep. Then on the other shoulders, the angel's saying, protein, fat, feel good, <laughs> eat me. And there's this yep. battle in our mind when we have that addictive relationship to sugar and how to get that dopamine rush, but how to break through that carb addiction is so hard for people when we're so type A driven, ambitious people that what would you suggest that are some tips to get through that i just said you know what i'm going to start early in the morning with 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 the keto lifestyle i'm going to start every day like is a new day and i'm going to really that's it there's no like secrets i always use the morning as a reset i always did always and it just felt good to lose the weight so i wanted to do it like i felt great and i just i wanted to keep going but I totally get it. And it's normal to feel that way. And it's, listen, you got to, you got to let your, nobody's perfect. Okay. We're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to want that sugar. Anybody that tells me, you know, they're straight, whatever, I'm glad for you and it's great. But the majority of the people are like me who struggle with it, yeah. you know? And so what I did a lot was when I was hungry, I would drink lots of water and I would chew gum. Like that would just distract my mind from being hungry. I don't know if the the gum is keto, but I, it didn't it didn't matter. It worked. Yeah. So, do you drink plain water, or were you drinking fizzy water? I find like I've been salting my water. I've been making tea. I just made some turmeric herbal tea, then poured it over ice, and I add a bunch of Redmond sea salt in it, and that usually helps a lot, especially when you call it the keto flu that we don't have enough electrolytes in it. But sometimes it's just. We need minerals, electrolytes in our water. You know what? That's a great call, and I probably should be doing it. I'm not. <laughs> I just drink regular water, and just yeah. like I need to, I need to pound water more. Like well, I, 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 I don't. I'm a thing. My thing. I always say. I'll say this to you. More is not better. It's more that you know. I'll go the bathroom, you pee all the time. If you just drink plain water, if you want to actually hold on and hydrate your water, we need electrolytes in the water. So we're not just drinking plain water, 
to replace what we lose because we don't sweat out. The saying is we don't sweat out water, we sweat out electrolytes. So, you know, using element T or Relight, or I just put Redmond sea salt. I've been just like piling it on my food and putting it in my water and drinking that. So that helps a lot in the beginning too. Right. That's a, that's a great idea. And so I, like, I, I just right there, I've learned a lot. I I just, (laughs) you you know, I, I, but back then I didn't know anything and I, you know, I just drank water and I did what I did. So if you you had a cheat, like you, you created keto Chris trying to find some treats probably, but what, before you created keto Chris, if you have like people struggle, they have that sweet tooth and we want to ideally switch to savory and not crave sugars. Cause I think even if we have sugar, we still are training the brain that I need sugar, but what did you do to overcome having those sugar cravings that you said, just have more protein and fat, but did you have any little yeah. tricks? Uh, to be I, to be quite frank, I just said, no, I'm not going <laughs> to do it. Period. I wish I had, you know, and, and, but that's why, that's one of the, re- that is why we created Keto Chris because yeah. I would walk down the aisle and I would try stuff. And guys, this is no disrespect to any brand out there. Everybody hustles. They do their great job. And I, I give cr- uh, props to everybody. But we just wanted to do it a little bit different. And we, I, the reason why I'm fat or was fat is because I love food. And I love to try different things. And so I knew that there was an opportunity at least to try to come up with these three flavors. And we did. And everybody loved them. And that's why we have the business that we do today, because we're focused on what the customers say. It's not what I want or what we want as a business. It's what customers want. And I know that's getting off of the keto, keto, our topic here, but that's just how we came to what I, if you would have told me four years ago, we'd be in the bar business to have all the success. The success is because we have so many incredible customers. Yeah. And I told you the other day, I said, that's kind of what Lululemon, the brand got so big. I, I, uh, side tip or trivia. I was the first ambassador for Lululemon in the U S <laughs> and I, cause my uncle lived down the street from them in Vancouver, Canada. Cause I was from Canada originally. And anyways, their philosophy to grow their brand was listening to the customers. So people bought clothes and said, I really like the shirts like this or the pants like that. It's kind of same with your product. I think you're the secret to success for companies to grow is actually listening to the consumer who's buying the product, what they want. So I wish, you know, I guess good for you that other companies don't do that, but I think that's a secret tip to build a product for is listening to the consumer, what they want. I'm smiling because you couldn't have said it better myself. I mean, we we are a customer service company first. Mm-hmm. We're a bar company second. The bar is just a platform for us to be able to to inspire, to share the story, whatever it is, whatever your can-do story is. We talk about this off air. You told me about your can-do story, and I shared mine. And, you know, everybody's got a can-do story. And it just so happens we have a great tasting product. And I will tell you that everything we do is going to, and I know taste is subjective, but, you know, again, we're just fortunate to be able to, you know, have that. We'll always have that mentality of listening to customers. That's why God gave us two ears and only one mouth. (laughs) I haven't heard that. That's probably a good one to share with that. So I think it's, it's can do that. It goes with being switching to fat adapted keto lifestyle for athletes of all levels that we talked at the keto low carb athlete, but I think it's realizing that you can do it and transitioning from the standard American high sugar carb addicted lifestyle to more of a fat burning individual. It's that transition we're talking about. That's really challenging, but you're talking about the mindset part of it. Like you were determined and you have to be motivated and driven to stick through that tough first week or three weeks. Like I have a yes. client, I said, this could take three months, but don't right. give it in. I think it's that can do yeah. mindset that your business is built on and your way of living to fight through having cerebral palsy that you're not any different. We all have those roadblocks in our head, those negative self-talk that we need to overcome. Right. And it's okay to have that. We all have that. We're human, you know, and, and I just... 
you know, I just, I saw the success that I was having in the pool and I was like, man, if I did this for my diet, the sky's the limit. Just yeah. do it. No yeah. excuses. And it's okay if you don't fail, but you, I mean, it's okay if you fail, but you never know until you try. You know, I, I moved, we're going off here, but, but I, I, we grew up in Michigan. My parents always encouraged me to go somewhere warm to go to school. I couldn't pick a further place than Arizona. And I just said every day, I said, you know what, we're going to give it our best. And you know what, if it doesn't work out, what's the worst thing that could happen? You go back home and you live with mom and dad. And mom and dad were the greatest people and are the greatest people in the world. So it's not that bad. And I, my parents had bought me, they had bought a plane ticket that they could use anytime they wanted. They never in five years had to use it as an emergency. Never. Because I just found a way. Yeah. And you can find a way. And we're going to fall. And I had tough days. We all have tough days. But you just, you got to just, just get after it. Yeah. And I think that's it, switching our nutrition because it is such a, a psychological, chem, biochemical, you know, neurochemical addiction just to food as it is alcohol or drug. And to break that carb sugar addiction for people, it is so challenging. But I think once you get over, you know, that first hump is just like, ah, freedom. And so once you became more of the fat adapted into, Showing nutritional ketosis, were you feeling, you know, mentally better? Like, what was your change, and how did you measure if you were in ketosis, or did you not? I I never I never peed on the strip. I just knew that I was feeling better. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I just I needed to answer the question for myself. I didn't. I told you I'm not a keto guru. I follow the diet. I follow the lifestyle. You're the one that knows the the technical aspects of it, and you guys. You know, De- Deb knows her stuff, but I just what what motivated me was just my ability to say, "Wow, I can do this." As confident as I am, I surprised my own damn self. Yeah. So, do you do eating? Hold on. Say what? that again. You broke up. I-, I know my speaker keeps switching. I keep hitting something. Sorry. Do you eat more of a low carb, higher? Ah, I keep switching. Are you eating more protein and fat now regularly or do you have a cheat day or how do you kind of make it more sustainable way of life? You know, I guess it's because I've been doing it for so long that your body just gets used to it. I mean, I just, I, I also think for me, exercise is a big part and, you know, I would encourage that to, to anybody just get out there and exercise a little bit, but on the diet, you know, it's just, you know, I'll have my steak and I'll have, you know, let me push pot. All right. Sorry about that. I had a little blip here. Now, do you find it sustainable? Is it kind of natural way to eat more fat and protein and keep your carbs low? Or do you cycle and kind of call what Ben Azadi calls keto flex that you're in and out of ketosis? Um, I just try to stay away from carbs and sugars as much as possible. Um, you know, and that, that's what I, that's what I do. And I try to look at, you know, uh, just minimize the carbs and sugars for me. And it, it works. Mm-hmm. It just, you know, again, drink lots of water. And, you know, again, I, you know, I just stay away from the breads and, you know, all, all the sugars, and try, you know, I, I, you know, I'm, I eat a lot of red meat, probably too much red meat. I worry to be honest with you, I worry about the cholesterol a little bit. Do you do you have do you get that a lot? Uh, yes, and I just had clients ask me that. It's like, well, how can I eat all this meat and fat? And be, how is that healthy? I go, how is it healthy to have cereal and bread and all the packaged processed Correct. foods? A hundred percent agree with you. Yeah. So what's your what's your what's your answer to that? Well, I I send Dr. Ken Berry his great videos, and I just interviewed. Um, uh, I just went blank, but the carnivore guys, and it's, they've done a lot of research and I have lots of links. I send people to give them the doctors because I'm right. just a pra- health practitioner, but I can say, here's what the doctors are saying. Here's what the research. So they actually have research on this, that it's not bad for you. And it's not going to cause heart disease. Inflammation causes heart disease from insulin resistance, causing inflammation, Try high triglycerides and eating the high carb foods, the high ref- 
find sugars and vegetable oils, that's more the trigger for health issues. Insulin resistance is where it starts. If you look at Dr. Ben Bigman's research. So I just kind of send him links to prove that, Hey, I'm not a doctor, but here, these guys are listen to them. <laughs> exactly. And you know what? I will tell you, I used to be on all those kind of hard, uh, like medications, blood pressure. Uh-huh. The, I'm off all of those now. Great. I was going to ask that. I, I, yeah. I'm off all those, which is great. Like I, you know, I know that cholesterol run, runs in the family and it's hereditary. So I got to be careful and I get it checked all, the, you know, four months and it's all good. Yeah. And people forget that cholesterol is not evil. It's a precursor to all of our sex hormones. So we need cholesterol. And people think, again, less is is better to have it too low, you know, and not have the good balance. So it is it's good to have those healthy fats because all of our cell membranes are made of fat and are looking at a brain health and all that. So your inflammation and markers improved your blood chemistry markers. You test probably yes. when you do the, everything yeah. improved after you changed yeah. your diet. Yes. Cause I, I, I literally lost 50 pounds. 50. Uh, and how long did that take you? Probably two years. And then I'd like to, sh- I'd like to show you before and after it's like, literally I ate myself. That's awesome. Did you exercise along this in your pool exercise and the strength training? Literally every day I was in the pool every mm-hmm. day with, with my man, Gabe, uh, Gabe is the greatest. In fact, he, he moved to Miami a couple months ago. So I haven't had a consistent swim guy for two, th- two since September 1st and he's back in town visiting. So I get to get in the pool with him and he's literally like my sensei. He was the guy that said, Adam, you got to do this. And I, I believed in him and I trusted him and we both took a leap of faith. And anytime that I can bring his name up and talk about Gabe, it's just, it's, he's incredible. It, we he's all need incredible. people like that in our lives. They're important yes. people to have. Yep. So how's your, the other lifestyle habits? I always like to work with my clients on their stress, management tips, and their sleep. As you change the way you are eating, did your lifestyle habits improve and your sleep hygiene routine? Did you feel like your quality of sleep improved through the night? Most definitely. Everything, everything improved when I, when I, when I started losing, losing the weight and getting into that routine. And I can say no question, all those things that you bring up, sleep, stress, everything. Because I was, I was such on this euphoric high because I, I was in the pool every day. I was losing weight. I was with my brother. I was out here in California. The weather's great. You know, just a lot of things were, go, were going right. And not that things weren't going right before, but it was just like, man, this is really, this is really coming together. Yeah. Well, but I, but I do think Debbie, a lot of it was with diet. I really, and it's really, I think that it gave me a lot of confidence. And with confidence, you're able to handle stress and things that come up in life a lot easier. Yeah. So you know? I think that's a big part of the can-do philosophy is having confidence and self-esteem and empowerment to overcome those challenges that come your way. If it's carb addiction and not being able to break that relationship up with sugar right away, but pushing through it and committing to something and believing it and having a sense of purpose and, you know, discovering what your why is, I think is an essential for longevity and improving the aging process. Right. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't agree more with you. So is it more of a, you know, like you said on your notes, I, I always say this, but it's not a diet. It's just a way of life. When people say they're doing the keto diet, I'm like, no, it's not like my mom asked a few months ago, what, how do I explain how you eat? And I said, real food. <laughs> it's not a diet. It's just what we're supposed to eat. So how do you explain, you know, you're not on a diet, but is this just the way you live and this is how you operate and this is a lifestyle? Yeah. I mean, uh, it's really a lifestyle. I didn't look at it as a diet. I actually looked at it like I was teaching my body a new language. Like we learn English, we learn Spanish. I'm learning a diet. Or I, uh-huh. Again, I slipped up and say diet. It's a, it's a, it's an eating language. Yeah, I like and that. I, and eating and you're learning a new language. You know, it, 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 and that's honestly how I felt. Like I'm learning a new language. I didn't know 
Debbie, and again, I've said this earlier on the podcast, I, it's not like I'm a snack eater five times a day. I'm going to the cookie jar. I can't even reach the cookie jar. So it, was, it wasn't even an option for me, even if I wanted to. I'm not a snacker. I just ate whatever, you know, when you go to a restaurant, you have a slice of pizza, you try a piece of pasta, you try, you know, whatever. And it was just like, no, I'm losing weight. I'm feeling great. I'm, this is what I'm doing. And boom, I had the results. Yeah, I think that's hard for, you know, just people need to remember that it, it's a process. It's a journey. Yes. And it's, it's not going to be instant success. You have to work at it. It's not like some magic pill you take and you're going to drop right. 50 pounds. You actually have to do the work, which is why I think so many people in our country are overweight and fighting with obesity is because they don't want to put the work in because this does take sure. choices, choices we make. Right. And it's hard. It's, yeah. it's hard. And, and listen, just because I do it doesn't mean somebody else has to do it. Like I respect everybody if they're obese, if they're thin. Whatever. I'd love to hear everything. And we're, again, we are all not perfect. I'm going to have a cheat day. I'm going to, you know, eat things I shouldn't eat. But as a whole, I follow that diet and, or the, the language and I believe in it. I really do. It worked. It really works. But you got to want to do it and nobody else can force you. But we can support and be positive. And it's not a contest. It's not like, you know, just do you. Mm hmm. Yeah, you know. can do, do you. So what do you find is a great way to get people to make the change into what they're eating to be more of fat burning individual? Like what are some tips you want to give people to get started? The biggest thing that I would do is set realistic expectations. Don't say I'm going to go cold turkey right away. That's unrealistic. Just say, you know what? Maybe two days a week, I'm not going to eat carbs and sugars. Just just small steps. That's it. Because I want you to build success. I don't care what the doctors say. I don't care what the literature says. Just do you. Start small. Say, you know what? I'm going to do one day a week and be celebrate the wins. Celebrate mm -hmm. the wins. That's it. Just yeah. celebrate the wins. There's no timetable. There's no timetable. Just That's celebrate the wins. Good. Period. And then what about, you know, lifestyle wise to help get your mind right? How do you start your day to make it the best day ever? You know, when Gabe was here and I had a swimming coach every day, like that would be the first thing that I do is get in the pool. And, because you know, because of work and other challenges and being on the road, it's been challenging for me to get that work in the pool. Now I could do it, but and I will do it, and I need to do it. I need to check myself. But that's what I would do. Like, I would do some sort of exercise in the morning. And I would do, you know, some kind of activity. I don't care what it is. Moving my arms, picking my legs up, you know, doing fake jumping jacks in my chair. Just do something for 10 minutes. Just 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, it's just do something. Because we want to add more movement throughout the day. Is better to do that than just do 30 minutes of exercise in the morning and then do nothing the rest of the day. It's best to have little s movement snack breaks throughout the day. Don't do eating snacks, but movement snacks. <laughs> right. Any that's okay too. If you have a snack, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta, I, I get what you're saying, but I don't want people yes, to beat themselves right. up. Mindful. I, I don't, right. Right. Mindful. And you can use a keto crisp bar because it's a hundred percent keto. It tastes great. And so there, or there's, so, there's a lot of great snacks out there. I know, but I love the the new, what's the butter, butter and salt. The but, yeah, the butter and salt, guys. I got to tell you, I had one the other day. and hold on. Oh, You're coming back. It is okay, I'm coming so back. good. Yeah, I, you know, I, because of our own success, we've been sold out of a lot of products. I mean, a lot of bars. So I know how good the bar tastes. But there was a whole caddy of butter and salt. And I was just like, man, this bar is just so good. Like, it, it is so good, guys. And I, I'm just excited to share and, you know, just just try it. I mean, just, uh, you know. Is it best to buy it on the website or where can people go buy your product? Wherever you guys shop, we've got it on our website, www.tastecandu.com. Uh, it's on Amazon. You can type in Keto Crisp. Or if you Google just the word can do, C-A-N-D-O, 
it comes up. You can write can do keto bar. And I'm going to give you a discount code uh, for 25% off. And Ooh. you got to click, you got to click on, um, you got to click off the subscription button. The subscription is if you want a box or a flavor every month or every two months, we could send it to you and you get 15% automatically, but no other discount code works. Or you can do a one time purchase, which I would recommend, and use Adam Can Do at checkout either on Amazon or on our website, or if you shop at Whole Foods, Sprouts, or any other uh, gro- grocery store in your area. And of course, you can always email me at Adam at Keto Chris. I love, as you guys can tell, love, <laughs> love, 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 love people. So I, I would welcome, welcome you to fill up my inbox. Everybody on my team is like, Adam, it's crazy. You can't do that to everybody. But I don't care. I love it. I, I love that. I, That's great. I would even give out my cell phone number, and I'm happy to do that, but I won't. But if you email me and you want my cell phone number, I may just call you because I'm not the <laughs> best ty- typing guy in the world. But I love to talk. So yeah. I just I want – I. You know, I, I will say this as we end. I'm so grateful because there's so many products on the, out there in the market. And for you to give us a chance it means everything to me. And it goes back to when I was five years old. And I'm so grateful for everybody to give me an opportunity that I just want to pay it back and pay it forward, whatever you call it. I just, I'm so grateful. And, and I, I can't thank you enough, Debbie. And your, your listenership and all your fans out there. And it's just awesome. <laughs> well, I, if people are in video, I've had a smile, a genuine smile the whole time we've podcast because this guy just makes me happy. And I saw them at Expo S natural product show. And I was already using the bar because it was my go-to bar for bike rides. And, uh, cause they taste amazing and it's great a little dessert if you want something desserty, but you're just, I, saw you in the aisle and your team was like, you got to meet Adam. And I was just, you know, you're an amazing person. So I'm sure everyone comes across you and just, you make an impact in everyone's life. So don't stop, keep it up. You can do it. And you keep inspiring people to make that positive change in their life to make it a better world. Well, thank you. You guys inspire me to do what I do. So the feeling is really mutual and I don't, you know, I'm just so thankful and, and I just am grateful for the time and, and just grateful to, you know, to be interviewed and ask these questions. And I just really appreciate it. And where are you, are you going to any conferences this year? I know you're going to some food shows. You have to look out for yeah, my husband, yeah. Neil. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask you about Neil. Uh, actually, starting June 7th, I'm going to be in a kid, UNFI show, which for those that want to know, UNFI is one of the largest distributors in the world. Uh, for food and so we'll have a booth there at the unfi show and then directly from there we go to um, ke which is another distributor that's in chicago and then directly from there i'm going to sprouts con and that's a trade show for all sprouts vendors and so we're in sprouts and just very excited to meet everybody in person there you know we've all been locked up for covid for however long we've been and then, uh, so I'm on the road for the next 14 days, but I love, I love being on the road. I've never done three cities in six, seven days. So, um, uh, it's going to be nuts, but I, I told my caregiver this morning, I said, Glenn, let's be ready, baby. We got to do this. <laughs> so we're, we're hitting the road. We're excited. We're honored and we're ready to go. So awesome. it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Good. Well, enjoy it. We thank you for what you're doing and we'll see you along the way. You guys email me, give me a shout out. Listen, I love you all. Please use that discount code. I want, I want you guys really to try the bars. It would mean a lot. And I love your email. So go use Adam can do for the, you know, the discount and whatever you need. I'm here for you guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the low carb athlete podcast. If you have any questions, feedback, or topic suggestions, let us know on Facebook or at DebbiePotts.net. You can help us to continue to grow by leaving a review on iTunes. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.